Hello everyone, this is Cynthia on Embracing His Word. Well, it certainly is my pleasure to be able to speak with you today. Well, I have a prophetic word that God has really been placing on my heart. And this word is, today is your day to be free from the spirit of anger. You know, we all have the emotion of anger. And so, if we don't know how to deal with that particular emotion in a godly way, the devil will get an upper hand on our lives. So today, I'm speaking and declaring that this is your day to be free from the spirit of anger. So, there are some of you that are mothers, that you're wary, that you may get out of control with your anger and disciplining your children. There are spouses. There are uh, spouses that are unable to control their anger with that explode and rage. And so, well, this is a video that I really want you to watch, especially if you're dealing with deep-seated, deep-rooted anger in your life. This is, a, this is a video that I certainly want you to watch throughout the whole uh, video, and I'll follow up with some other series. And please share the video with your friends. Uh, and also subscribe to my channel uh, if you have not already subscribed. So this word today uh, is about getting free from anger. And as I said, all of us have the emotion uh, th that is of anger, but we must learn how to deal with it in a right way. Now we're in a season of many trials and difficulties and I know there are many families at home they're sheltered in and I was just listening to the news the other day that the, uh, the rate of domestic violence has increased and so I want to speak especially to husbands and wives uh, that are at home and having to deal with issues of anger. I want you to let this day be a new day, a new beginning for you. In this season, many of you have lost your some of your loved ones, uh, so you're dealing with that particular kind of anger. Some of you are angry with God. I can definitely testify that with people can feel let down and blame God. I've been there and done that. I'm, I want to say uh, please do not blame God because God is not at the root of your problem. And so I want you to begin to just allow yourself to be humbled under the mighty hand of God and allow God to heal your hurt, heal your pain, your disappointments. And I want you to begin to see this is a new day. I want you to begin to put your, your full confidence, your full reliance upon the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's talk about uh, the open door or legal right principle. So this is a principle that is not talked much about in the church setting. So this open door principle or legal right is uh, comes from Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. God spoke to Cain and said, you will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must do it. So this is a very insightful and a warning from God to Cain. And I believe this word is not only in, recorded in the word of God for Cain, concerning Cain, but this is a word for God's people today that they must choose. You have a will. You must choose to do what is right. So in, in, in other words, if Cain doesn't rule over the sin in his life, that sin that had become um, unresolved anger in Cain's life and jealousy, sin it says sin will rule over Cain. In other words, a demonic spirit will have an open door to enter into Cain's life and dominate his emotions, dominate the way he interacts with his family members. 
So the phrase, the phrase, sin is crouching at your door, means that Cain's sin had made an opening in his heart. And you, so we see right here that we can have openings for the enemy to creep into our hearts. And so we don't want to have those kind, type of spiritual openings that the enemy can creep in because we have a sin that we refuse to submit and surrender to the Lord. We refuse to humble ourselves, whereas uh, to the point that the enemy can creep in because there is a spiritual opening. So this sin is a demonic spirit ready to pounce and pounce on Cain and dominate him and his emotions and his relationships. If we don't rule sin, sin will rule us. So we we don't want to give the enemy an upper hand over our lives by refusing to acknowledge there's a sin issue. We we haven't humbled ourselves. But we want to be obedient to the word of God. God gives us that warning to protect us. And so it's very important that we take heed to the warning that God gives us. So see how Satan, let's look at how Satan led Cain into the sin of murder. Through anger, not surrender to God. So the next verse says, one day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out to the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother, Abel, and killed him. So you see that instead of Cain taking the advice that God spoke to him, uh, mastering the, that strong emotion of anger, Cain instead uh, nourished the anger, he nourished uh, the resentment and the bitterness that he had against his brother Abel. And, and not only that, he planned in his mindset to kill Abel. And that's exactly what he did. So God is saying to you today, I want you to deal with anger at its onset. What, are, what do I mean at the onset? Immediately, when you feel that anger just rising up in your spirit, that is the time that you need to uh, recognize in your heart and soul, take control of it. Don't allow it to uh, dominate and control you. So don't let Satan gain an entrance into your soul. So Cain, he embraced the sin of anger and nursed it to the point of committing murder. So you see, sin is progressive. A little anger mixed with unforgiveness doesn't hurt you. That's the lie that the enemy will tell you. This is how subtle the devil works in a person's life. Before you know it, it's affecting every relationship that you encounter. Bitterness against your spouse. Bitterness against your mother or your father. Bitterness against your children. Bitterness against your manager or your boss. God's will is for you to choose freedom, to choose to be obedient unto him. And we must remember that we as God's people, we fight not against flesh and blood, but we're fighting against principalities. So we, we need to recognize these are demonic forces at work that's trying to dominate and control our emotions. So until you learn how to deal with that anger, your blessings will not flow. Do you know that your blessings are definitely connected to your obedience? So when we choose to obey the Lord, then that's when God can release those blessings into your life. That's when God can give you that job promotion. That's when God can bless your business to prosper. When we learn to obey the Lord from the beginning. So I want to to see I want you to see that God wants you to be blessed. He says, "Beloved, I want you to above all things I want you to prosper and be in health." So we want he wants us to prosper. He wants us to be blessed. It is always God's will for you to walk in peace regardless of what trials you are experiencing in life. So I speak healing to that pain in your heart and in your soul today. May the Holy Spirit begin to just minister to your soul. 
I want to speak to those of you that are going through a difficult time, difficult, a hard time in your marriage, your relationships. I've been married for 33 years, so I know what God can do in a marriage. And I want to share just a little short testimony. I remember when I first got married, um, I, you know, I had this idea in my head that I will have a beautiful marriage and, and you know, everything will be just grand and dandy. Well, when I got into my marriage, I soon discovered that there will be many uh, anger issues and many days of arguments and that's exactly what happened not a week went by there was not an argument between my husband and i and so i was the type of person that i was uh introverted um you see um when you have unhealed when you have wounds in your heart and in your soul you attract the same type of person into your life so obviously I had some rejection in my life and that's exactly what I attracted in a relationship. Someone else that was rejected in, in uh, his life. And so my husband, um, he was the type of person that um, there were uh, a lot of spiritual issues going on there. Um, sometimes, you know, he had this Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Uh, personality but and you didn't know wh whether he was going to explode or not and so I um, this went on for a few years and I began to talk to the Lord about it and I said Lord it doesn't look like my marriage is going to survive and so um, I began the Lord began to speak to my heart to get into the Word of God I got into God's Word and the, the scripture that God led me to was in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 and it says if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal and if I have a prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And if I give all I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. So this scripture began, I began to really meditate upon these uh, particular words that love is patient and love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. And God began to really deal with my own heart. That when my husband went into a rage or an explosive rage, that I was not to react in the same manner. Let me say that one more time. That when my husband went into an explosive rage, I was not to react in the same manner. And I began to talk with the Lord about that. And I said, okay, Lord, when, when he explodes again, I am not going to do the same thing. I'm not going to react in that manner. And so the day came that um, my husband had an explosive uh, rage episode. And so he had bought me these beautiful dishes, Mother Day dishes and and he got angry about something and began to take the dishes and throw them on the floor and break the dishes. And my response was not to go into reaction like what he did, but I began to sing a worship song. And I began to hum and I began to praise the Lord. And, and he looked at me 
and was confused and he couldn't figure out what what is going on with her and so that spirit of rage just left him for that moment I know and so he calmed down and I want you to see uh, that those of you that are experiencing difficulties and, and hard times in your marriage that if you begin to just humble yourself a lot of times we say Lord uh, my husband is a problem but if we begin with ourselves we begin to humble ourselves and ask God to work on our own hearts that's when God can begin to make a move in your marriage and so I began to continue to stay in the word began to pray not every day was a perfect day but God day by day God led me by his spirit how to pray how to intercede how to stand on his word and that's how God began to bring healing in my marriage and not only did I just pray but every opportunity that uh, that my husband and I could to go to deliverance ministry that that was the opportunity that we would take he will be willing to go for our deliverance so sometimes um, the anger has gotten so deeply rooted that deliverance needs to play, take place uh, casting out spirits of bitterness and anger and so don't be afraid of pursuing your healing and your deliverance in the Lord. And so wise, I want you to remember also this particular scripture that's for our husbands and wives. It says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse um, 33. However, let each man of you, without exception, love his wife as been in a sense his very own self. And let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband. Reverence her husband. That she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates and esteems him. And that she defers to him, praises him, and loves and admires him exceedingly. So I want you to see, wives, the importance of using your words wisely. Wisely communicating with your husband. Respecting, honoring your husband. And so, and husband remembering that you really need to love your wife. Understand your wife. And uh, it's not about you. Uh, controlling and manipulating everything inside the marriage but both of you learning how to reverence and submit to one another out of love for Jesus Christ and so I will continue to talk about on my next video how to recognize these different uh, anger points and how to deal with the anger and so I say a prayer for you today father I ask that you bless and you touch every viewer every individual that's going through trials and difficulties in this season Lord I just speak Lord God your presence and your peace over them father I ask oh God for your peace to mount guard over their hearts and over their mind and spirit I rebuke the powers of darkness that enter into the marriage into the family to bring destruction to bring harm I, I break off the assignment of the enemy that comes to counsel out the marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let healing take place. Use that wife. Use that spouse. Use the children to be instruments of healing. Lord, thank you, Lord, for re restoration taking place even today. I speak restoration. I speak healing for the hurts, the wounds, the disappointments, every lie that was told, every disappointment. Lord, I speak healing to those wounds and hurts in the powerful name of Jesus. And Father, I pray, Lord, that no weapon that the enemy have formed against the family unit today, that it cannot continue to prosper. I break it off in the authority of Jesus Christ's name. I thank you, Lord, for your love and your presence in the home. In Jesus' powerful name, I pray. Amen. And so be blessed. I want you to listen and follow up with the next video. Uh, make sure you share the video. Make sure you like. And, and I need your comments. Be blessed and have a wonderful day.